welcome this is Preeti I am so glad you're joining me today today I'm using this poetic peonies stamp set and we're going to create a wall art so no card but something a little different and I'm using this watercolor cardstock from arches this is a hundred and forty pound cotton watercolor cardstock you can definitely swap out any watercolor that you have in your stash I happen to have that and that's why I'm using that one and I'm also going to use this um, frame that I have and I'm going to just need enough cardstock that will go in the insert between the frames panel and the back panel uh, for my uh, for my art itself so here I'm using some distress oxide ink to stamp my florals I've, sta I've collected a couple of flowers and some leaves and I've also made a uh, uh, a mask using uh, some masking um, a post-it note actually fully a sticky back post-it note and I'm just going to stamp these floral images in clusters sometimes individually sometimes uh, two or three in a cluster just creating a pattern all over this cardstock using this uh, hickory smoke a gray um, uh, what do you call um, distress oxide ink and I'm just going to keep doing this until the entire panel is uh, is done um, the reason I chose to do some wall art today is because uh, I've been watching uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, people using printed images from Etsy and other places to add to frames and add onto the wall and I've seen quite a few of them with some beautiful floral backgrounds and background images and it got me thinking Rubbernecka carries so many beautiful floral stamp set uh, and I, I, I was so excited that uh, that I could do something similar with my own take to the wall art print uh, style and do it more uh, make it more handmade versus uh, printed and I'm promising you it's very simple it's very easy you can easily do this uh, and again this doesn't have to be the wall art if you don't want it to be a wall art you can definitely cut it down to smaller size put it on a card panel put a sentiment and you're good to go and here I've completed stamping the entire pattern using those images and the distress oxide hickory smoke ink now I'm going to choose a few distress ink and also a couple of distress oxide ink and I want to show you that it you can definitely mix and match mediums when you're coloring you don't have to necessarily uh, stick to one form of watercolor um, and here the reason I'm choosing the distress oxide and the distress um, inks is because I want a few elements of my wall art to be bright and a couple to be muted so I'm starting off with this lightest shade which is scattered sh straw and I'm filling up my brush with water and I'm dipping it into this color picking it up and just giving a light wash over all the flowers in this image so really not doing anything just giving a very light wash of this color all over this image now watercolor the way you watercolor is by adding layers and that's how you build uh, colors you if you started off dark it's very difficult to move those colors later on so if you start off lighter especially if you're using um, inks that are not exactly watercolors but work like watercolor for example here it's the distress inks that I'm using you could do the same thing with the color fuse inks as well I did not have the colors that I wanted for this palette and that's the only reason I'm using distress inks but distress oxide ink the reason I chose distress oxide is because it has a very chalky feel to it so it gives a very muted um, it's not as vibrant as uh, a, a crisp ink you know um, a, a dye ink for example it's not as vibrant when you paint it it has this soft matted muted matted look I hope that makes sense you can see here how the flowers look so muted and for that I've just taken a blue tone and a greenish tone or and I've mixed them together to create that um, almost grayish color leaves 
Now I'm taking going back to Distress Ink, which is, as I said, more vibrant than the Distress Oxide. You can see how vibrant they are. I'm using Rusty Hinge and I think Spiced Marmalade. I will add the colors that I've used in the description box below. And all I'm doing is I'm wet, uh, wetting the surface first and then I'm adding, just dropping the darkest color in the places where I have added water. Now, when you add water, you don't necessarily have to add a puddle of water, very little. You can see there, every time I put my brush into my water pan, I am using my brush to, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna take away the excess water on that paper towel that I have next to me, and then I'm gonna bring it to my uh, cardstock. And that is just because I don't want a whole lot of water on my cardstock as well. Watercolor is very forgiving, you know, and, and you can definitely work it a lot and it is quite forgiving, but still it's better to have less is more, you know, the more, if you are, if you have less, you can always add more other rather than vice versa. I hope that makes sense. So you can see here, I'm just adding those colors again. You don't have to have a lot of watercolor skills and stuff like that. You just need to understand how the water moves and how the paint moves. And the best way to understand that is to do something like this. Add a lot of flowers from your stamp sets, from the Rubberneckers, beautiful uh, floral stamp sets onto your watercolor cardstock and just play with watercolors, all kinds of watercolors, play with the color fuse inks, play with uh, uh, distress oxide, or if you have watercolors, then play with them. The only way you can learn how watercolor behaves is by playing with them. Yes, of course, there are techniques, there are methods, but all of those are, are lessons more knowledge play based those are all knowledge but in order to uh, apply those knowledge you have to play and work with it and you see there's so many things i do that maybe the watercolorist would say that's not the way to do it and maybe that's right too but i am learning from my mistakes i'm learning how to add and i'm creating art pieces just by playing so i encourage you to do the same just take your watercolors and play with it here i am so sorry i don't know i lost my footage where i was adding the colors to my leaves very simple again all i did is took that same blue color that we took initially and I am just adding it to the darker shade to give darker areas in the shadow areas just to add a little bit more pigment to the leaves and then all I'm doing is taking this brownish color pigment ink not pigment ink sorry distress oxide ink and I'm going to add it to the background when I say the background I mean the open places of the watercolor cardstock where I haven't stamped anything so the open areas all I'm doing is some places I'm wetting and like you can see here I'm wetting the surface and then adding the color some places I'm picking up the color directly and I'm adding it to the surface and that reason for that is I wanted my background surface to have a bit of contrast and variation in different places. I wanted some places to be light, some places to be dark, and there was no particular place where I chose. It was very random. So, and but I just kept going with this watercolor, I um, mean, with this color all over the surface, creating that variation just by adding water in some places and by not adding water uh, in some places when I picked up the ink and then adding water to water to move the, move the ink. And you can see here, the other thing to keep in mind is when you do watercoloring, papers do matter. The, the better the watercolor cardstock, the better the inks move said that you don't have to go buy the most expensive watercolor cardstock out there there is canson watercolors Trathmore, bristol there's so many different watercolors out there which are not very expensive at all um definitely all of those would work absolutely well as far as long as you're learning now that we have completely colored all the image 
it's time to bring these flowers to life and the easiest way to add flowers is a uh, life is to add some color pencils to it i just heat set it because i didn't want any wet surface to when i start adding the color pencil and tear or i didn't want to tear my cardstock and that's the reason i heat set it and now i'm just taking this purple color pencil these are prisma color pencils and i'm adding it to my shadow areas again wherever i've added the deepest color i'm going to add this uh, purple color here and that petal I think I forgot to add what color <laughs> you can see there but at the end you will not even notice once we've added all these colors and I'm just using this pencil very lightly to just barely touch the surface because the watercolor cardstock has a lot of texture on it these pencils just lay over the texture so it's not even going into the paper it's actually sitting on top of the paper enhancing that watercolor paper's texture and that's what i wanted uh, you know the end result is as if you've painted on canvas um, that's how it looks and it looks beautiful so tips and tricks to just create an artistic element just by changing up mediums on surfaces uh, on, like you wouldn't use a pencil or on a watercolor cardstock mainly because of the texture it is so textured that the pencil won't necessarily blend very well it's so heavily textured so you don't use watercolor i mean you don't use prismacolor pencils on watercolor cardstock but here i'm taking advantage of that part uh, of the paper being textured and the pencil not being able to work to my uh, uh, to my benefit to create that for canvas painted look i hope that makes sense so here you can see i'm just going to add now the rest of the colors after the purple i chose exactly the same colors what i've chosen like no very similar colors what i chose with my watercolor as well the reason i used purple to create the um, to create the the shadow is because anytime you want to use shadows using a complementary color makes the shadow much more realistic much more beautiful beautiful it enhances the shadow I just love adding uh, complementary colors in my shadow areas and that just gives a totally different look to your element of course you don't have to do that you can definitely start off with your darker orange I use terracotta as my darkest color you can definitely do that but adding that little bit of purple definitely gives a little more character to the flower now for the leaf all I'm doing I'm taking a blue that is very similar to the color of the uh, of the distress oxide that we used and i'm just adding it to the shadow areas wherever the leaf would uh, add shadow if there is a leaf curling towards itself i'm just going to add a shadow underneath it uh, the leaf that is touching closer to the flower i'm going to add it there and then i'm going to blend that using some sage green uh, color pencils again i will use i will have all the color pencil numbers the names everything that i've used in the description box below so you know exactly what i have used and i i I was so happy with the end result. Now I use this uh, image and now uh, that I'm sorry, now that I've done with that, I'm going to take some gouache here and I'm going to take this fan brush and I'm going to dip it in water and I'm going to dip it in paint and I'm going to take away most of the paint of the of the brush. So very little brush, very little paint on the tips of the fan brush and I'm going to brush it all over the surface. And what I was planning, what I was going to say was this, uh, I needed something fall, uh, like a, like a art in my room for fall in my bedroom for fall. And I didn't have a piece that represented fall in any way. And I didn't want to put pumpkins and stuff like that. I wanted something different. And I, that's when I started searching for art prints. And then I was like, huh, why don't I create my own art print? And I took uh, some inspirations from different uh, art prints that I saw, and I liked one of the one of the ones that I liked was um, an art print with floral images with some distressing on it, and and that's how this whole thing came up to be. So that white that you added is to create the distressing element onto the floral. So this white just kind of wipes off some places of the flowers and the leaves, and that kind of creates a distressed look. And now all I'm doing is I'm giving these images a little bit more pop. So I've taken this black 
fine nib pen and I'm just drawing the outline of the leaves and the vein and the outline of the flowers so just the outlines nothing more so if you look at the actual stamps uh, this peony stamp there's a lot of uh, detailing within the flowers too and I don't want to do any of those with black I want to keep that to muted as it is uh, with all the coloring that we did but I'm just going to take this black fine line pen and I'm going to draw all over the edge of the flower and that just that adding that little bit of black just creates the flowers and the leaves to pop off a bit more from the surface and all the distressing so here this I've taken the scratch paper and the reason for that is uh, the Prisma water uh, the Prisma color pencils are wax I think they're wax based if I'm not wrong are they wax based or oil based I don't know the one of them it's based something so they kind of gunk up the <laughs> pen when I go over it so all I'm doing is I'm just scribbling my pen on that uh, cardstock so that it um, it takes away that uh, build up and then it makes the ink flow easily so I'm just you're going to see me scribbling off uh, now and again on that cardstock and that's the reason why that cardstock is there and I'm just going to keep drawing around the edges of this uh, beautiful florals and leaves and here I'm almost coming to an end of it and there it's all done and that pretty much completes the entire panel of course all that is left is to add it to this uh, um, frame and here you can see how beautiful that looks it really looks very pretty especially in my bedroom with where I wanted it placed it looks the colors are just pretty um, my pillows have that linen I have a very neutral color bedspread and some yellows a uh, yellow pillow so this just worked out beautiful little for my fall themed bedroom and here you can see the closer look of all the textures I really hope you can see all the textures and all the distressing and everything that we did just by using different mediums of colors uh, and and here you can see this is the closer look of that uh, image I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll give this wall art a go and I will see you next time bye bye